Applications to Physics and Engineering. In this video lesson, we will look at the application of hydrostatic pressure and force. In general, suppose that a thin horizontal plate with area A square meters is submerged in a fluid of density rho kilograms per cubic meter at a depth d meters below the surface of the fluid, as you see here in the picture. The fluid directly above the plate has a volume of the area of the shape multiplied by the depth of the plate. And so the mass is equal to rho times volume, and since volume is area times the depth, the mass can be written as rho, which is the density, multiplied by the area, multiplied by the depth. And we know that the force exerted is mass times acceleration due to gravity. But again, if the mass is rho times area times depth, we can substitute that in here and we get the following formula. Force is equal to the density of the fluid multiplied by acceleration due to gravity multiplied by the area of the shape multiplied by the depth at which the shape lies. Now what can get interesting about these problems is that suppose you have the water level up here and you have some shape that is submerged in the water like so. If you look at this, as you go down in depth, the area of what is being exerted on in terms of the force is changing as you move to deeper depths, right? Because the shape is not uniform, for example. So this whole process comes down to expressing the area of a slice of that shape at a particular depth. Let's take a look at the following example. Here we want to find the force exerted on the trapezoid-shaped dam due to hydrostatic pressure if the water is 4 meters from the top of the dam. So here we have a dam that is holding back water. We can see that the dam is 20 meters tall, 50 meters wide at the top, and 30 meters wide at the bottom. And we know that the water level is 4 meters from the top of the dam. So the first thing we need to do here is set up a coordinate system so that we can precisely measure certain lengths at certain depths. Now you can set up this coordinate system however you like. Some people prefer to put zero at the top of the dam and then 20 would be at the bottom of the dam. Some people will put zero at the top of the water level. And if that's the case, then the bottom of the dam would be 16, right? Because you have four meters here from the top. You could also put zero at the bottom of the dam and 20 at the top. So you can set this up however you like. The key is you just need to be consistent. So in this example, I'm going to call the top of the water level zero and therefore the bottom will be 16 because again, we know that it's four meters from the top. So if the total height here is 20 meters, then we know that this will be zero and this will be 16. Now what we need to do is look at a particular depth. So suppose we are at a depth of X meters right here. We need to figure out what is the area that this water is acting upon in terms of the force applied. So what we do here is we draw ourselves a little horizontal rectangle at that depth. So I'm just going to do that live here. And what we need to do is figure out what is the area of that rectangle. Well, if we zoom in here a little bit, we know that the thickness of this rectangle is going to be delta x. So really what we need to find is the length of this rectangle because the area is going to be the length times the width. And again, we know the width is the delta x. So we just need to figure out what is the length 
of that rectangle. So in order to do this, let's go ahead and bring in a new picture of our trapezoid. And let's draw some things that we know here. If I draw a vertical line from top to bottom here, and a vertical line from top to bottom here, we know that this distance is 30, and so this distance from here to here would also be 30 meters. And that means the distance from here to here is 10 meters, and the distance from here to here is 10 meters. We are assuming that we have a regular shaped trapezoid. So 10 plus 30 plus 10 is equal to the 50 meters here. So when I draw that horizontal rectangle here, we know that this portion of the rectangle has a length of 30. What we really need to know is how long is that portion of the rectangle. And then this distance over here will be the same. So what we have to do then is we have to focus in on this triangle here and set up some proportions so that we can figure out how long this piece is in terms of x. All right, so here is this triangle, and we've kind of zoomed in on it here. We know that this length is 10 meters. We know the total length here is 20 meters. We know that the distance from here to here is x. x stands for the depth to this point. So again, remember our coordinate system is that this is 0. So from here to here, it's just going to be a depth of x. Okay. And again, this, this is 4. And so if this whole thing here is 20, we can find the distance from here to here by taking 20 and subtracting x and subtracting 4. So b is going to be 20 minus x minus 4, and this is 16 minus x. And so we can go ahead and fill that in. Now really what we need is the length of this piece here, which I'm calling a. So to do that, I'm just going to set up a similar triangle here. I'm going to say that the distance a compares to the distance 16 minus x, the same way that the distance 10 compares to the distance 20. And again, this is because we have similar triangles. So now I can simplify this. I can say that a divided by 16 minus x is equal to 1 divided by 2. And then I'm just going to multiply both sides by 16 minus x. And that gives us a is equal to 1 half times 16 minus x. And if you distribute that, you're going to get 8 minus 1 half x. Okay, so that is the distance from here to here, which in our diagram is a distance from here to here. So how long is this rectangle then? Well, the length of that rectangle is going to be the distance from here to here, which we already know is 30, plus the distance from here to here, plus the distance from here to here. But these distances are the same, so we're going to have 2 times that distance, and that distance is 8 minus 1 half x. So the length of the rectangle is 30 plus 16 minus x, or 46 minus x. So the area of that rectangle at a particular depth of x meters is 46 minus x multiplied by delta x. So now the force, remember, is rho times g times area times d. Rho is the density of water. Water has a density of 1,000 kilograms per cubic meter. Gravity is 9.8 meters per second squared. The area is 46 minus x times delta x. And then the depth, well, the, again, the depth is how far below the surface is this rectangle of water. And we can see that if we're calling this 0, the distance from here to here is simply x. So if we simplify this a little bit, we get 9,800 
times x times 46 minus x times delta x. And so now to calculate the total force exerted on the whole shape, we are going to take the integral. Now when you integrate, you only integrate where you have water. So the water starts at 0 and goes down to 16. So we're going to integrate from 0 to 16. And then we have our force, which is 9800x times 46 minus x. And then, of course, when you integrate, delta x becomes dx. And then from here, you just need to complete the integral process. So we can pull out the 9800. We get 46x minus x squared with respect to x. And now we'll go ahead and integrate. So what we get is 46x squared divided by 2 minus x cubed divided by 3 from 0 to 16. 46 divided by 2, you can rewrite that as 23. So we have 23x squared there. Now, a nice thing here is when you plug in 0, you get nothing. So we only need to plug in 16. And so when we do that, we have 23 times 16 squared minus 16 cubed over 3, of course, multiplied by 9,800. And now when you plug that into a calculator, you get 44,322,133 and one-third newtons. And if we round this to three significant digits, we can express that in scientific notation as 4.43 times 10 to the seventh newtons. Let's take a look at this example again. And this time, let's change our coordinate system to have zero at the top of the dam instead of the top of the water level. I want to show you that it really doesn't matter how you set it up as long as you are consistent. So now the top of the dam is zero. The top of the water level is at four since it is four meters from the top. The depth is at the value of x, but notice that x is not really the depth, right? x is the distance from here to here. So the depth is going to be this distance, which we will figure out. And then, once again, we need to figure out how long this piece is right here. So let's go ahead and zoom in on that triangle. Okay, so here we are. We know that the length from here to here is equal to 10. We talked about that previously. We know that the depth of the uh, water here in terms of how far it is from the top is 4 meters from the top. We know this distance from here down to here is x. And so if the total distance here is 20, then the distance from here to here is 20 minus x. And now I can go ahead and set up my similar triangle. I can say that the distance a here compares to 20 minus x the same way that 10 compares to 20. So we'll write a divided by 20 minus x is equal to 10 divided by 20. And this is the same as a divided by 20 minus x is equal to 1 half. Multiplying both sides by 20 minus x, we get a is equal to 1 half times 20 minus x, which is 10 minus 1 half x. And now if we come back to the original diagram, we can find the length of this rectangle here by taking the length from here to here, which we know is 30, plus 2 times the length from here to here, which we just found is 10 minus 1 half x. And so if we do the math on this, we have 30 plus 20 minus x, which is 50 minus x. So now the area of that rectangle is going to be 50 minus x multiplied by delta x. And now we know the force applied to that rectangle is rho times g times area times depth. And again, this is 1,000 kilograms per cubic meter multiplied by 9.8 meters per second squared multiplied by the area, which we just figured out was 50 minus x times delta x. And then we have to multiply that by the depth. Now, what is the depth? Well, the depth 
is how far below the surface this this rectangle is. So again, the, the distance from here to here is x, but that's not the depth below the surface of the water. So what we really need for the depth is we need the length from here to here, and that is going to be x minus 4. All right, so now let's plug that in, x minus 4. And now to get the total force, we'll go ahead and simplify some of this. We have 9,800 multiplied by x minus 4, multiplied by 50 minus x, multiplied by delta x. And the total force is going to be the integral of this. And then delta x becomes dx. And remember, you only integrate where you have water. So the water in this case starts at 4 and ends at 20. So we have to integrate from 4 to 20. All right, so now we just need to complete the integral. So I have 9,800 integral from 4 to 20. I'm going to multiply this out. We're going to get 50x minus x squared minus 200 plus 4x dx. And this is equal to, let's go ahead and simplify a little bit more here. I have negative x squared plus 54x minus 200. And I think you notice in this problem that the, you know, the numbers are not quite as nice as they were in the previous method. So I'm not saying this method is better. It's just an alternative. Let's make sure we get the same answer here. So this is 9,800. Now we're going to integrate. We get negative x cubed divided by 3 plus 54x squared divided by 2 is the same as 27x squared minus 200 times x. And again, from 4 to 20. So now we are going to plug in 20. And then minus, we have to plug in 4. And we'll go ahead and take the liberty of using a calculator here to get this value. And we do indeed get the same answer. 44,322,133 and one-third newtons or in scientific notation, 4.43 times 10 to the seventh newtons. So I am not here to tell you which method is better. What I'm here to show you is that if you set up your coordinate system consistently, it should not matter how you set up that coordinate system. You just have to make sure that you calculate all the corresponding parts, whether it's the area of the rectangle or the depth of the slice, you have to set up all that stuff in coordinates with uh, your coordinate system. In the second example, we wish to find the hydrostatic force on one end of a cylindrical drum with radius 3 feet that is submerged in water 10 feet deep. Okay, so let's suppose we have a circular piece, that's the end of a cylindrical drum, and the surface of the water is up here, and they are telling us that it is submerged 10 feet deep, which means the bottom of this is at 10 feet. So what we need to do to do this problem is we need to bring in a coordinate system. So what I'm going to do here is put zero at the center of the circle, which is a little bit different. But that is going to help us get the equation for this circle much easier than putting zero up here. So we're going to put zero right here. Okay, so here is that coordinate system. We have zero at the center of the circle. We know that the bottom of the circle here is at a depth of 10 feet. So there's three feet here. And if I go up to seven feet up on top there, that is the top of the water level, okay? So that occurs at seven. So what we need to do now is look at a slice of this circle 
that is occurring at a particular depth. Okay, so there's the depth D. And we need to know how long is this slice because the area of that rectangle is going to be its length multiplied by its width. So this whole problem comes down to figuring out how long is this. So we need to go ahead and put down the equation for the circle. So we should know that the equation here is x squared plus y squared is equal to the radius squared. And we know the radius is 3. So that's going to be x squared plus y squared is equal to 9. And what we're doing here is we're taking a look at this point right here. And we know that that point has coordinates x and y. And x corresponds to this distance. So we can see that the length of this rectangle is going to be 2x, right? Because there's symmetry here. But what is x? Well, x depends on where you are this way. So what we need to do is solve for x in the equation. So we know that x squared is going to be 9 minus y squared, and that means that x is going to be the square root of 9 minus y squared. And so the length of our rectangle is 2 times x, which is 2 times the square root of 9 minus y squared. Now, what's y? Well, y is the y-coordinate of this point. So y rep represents this distance right here. So we now know the area of our rectangle is going to be the length of the rectangle multiplied by the width of the rectangle. Remember, the width is just the thickness here, and that is happening along the y-axis, so we're going to call that delta y. Now, what is the depth? Well, the depth is the distance from here down to that rectangle. So we know that the distance from here to here is 7, and if the distance from here to here is y, then the depth from here down to here should be 7 minus y. Now, you might be wondering, well, what happens when your rectangle is down here somewhere? How do you accurately measure the depth at that point? Well, at this point, y is going to be a negative number. So wherever y is, it's negative, and then when you do 7 minus that negative number, you're going to be adding that distance there. So this depth formula actually works no matter if the rectangle is above the x-axis or if it's below the x-axis. Next, we need to talk about the density of water in the customary system. So notice that the depth is given in feet, so we cannot use density equals 1,000 kilograms per cubic meter because these are the wrong units. So it turns out that the density of water in the customary system is 62.5 pounds per cubic foot. And I want you to notice that it's given in pounds, which means that the acceleration due to gravity is already in that calculation. And so this is rho multiplied by g. So remember, the force exerted on this rectangle is the density, rho times g, which is 62.5 pounds per cubic feet. And we're going to multiply that by the depth, which is 7 minus y, and then we're going to multiply that by the area, which is 2 times the square root of 9 minus y squared, delta y. And so to calculate the total force, we're going to take the integral wherever there is water. Now, there is water from negative 3 all the way up to positive 3. Remember, your coordinate system says that this is 0 right here. So we're going to start at the bottom here, which is at negative 3, and go all the way up to positive 3. And then we're going to put in our force function. And now we just have to compute this integral. So let's go ahead and multiply 2 times 62.5, which is 125. 
and we're going to integrate. And then we have 7 minus y multiplied by the square root of 9 minus y squared. And so to complete this calculation, it is going to be necessary to multiply 7 times this and y times this. So we're going to have 125 integral 7 times the square root of 9 minus y squared minus y times the square root of 9 minus y squared, all with respect to y. And that's going to break down into two separate integrals. Now, one interesting thing about this integral right here is this integral is equal to 0. And it is because this function is an odd function. And when you integrate an odd function from negative a to positive a, this is always going to be 0. Now, if you don't see that, you could evaluate this integral by making a u substitution. So you would just let u equal 9 minus y squared. du would be negative 2y dy, and then you would proceed like normal with that. But rest assured, this integral here is 0. So really, we only have to figure out this integral. So we're going to multiply 125 times 7, which is 875. And then we have the integral of the square root of 9 minus y squared, dy. And to do this, we're going to use a trig substitution. So I'm going to let y be equal to 3 times the sine of theta. dy will be 3 cosine of theta d theta, and then when y is negative 3, that's going to give us sine of theta equals negative 1, or theta equals negative pi over 2, and when y equals positive 3, we'll get sine of theta equals 1, which means theta will be positive pi over 2, and so this integral becomes 875, integral from negative pi over 2 to positive pi over 2, and we have the square root of 9 minus y squared, which is 3 sine of theta quantity squared, times dy, which is 3 cosine of theta d theta. So now let's go ahead and work on this radical here. We have 9 minus 9 sine squared theta. We can factor out the 9 and get 1 minus sine squared of theta. And of course, that is 9 cosine squared of theta, which we can simplify to 3 cosine of theta. And so this becomes 875 integral minus pi over 2 to positive pi over 2. And we have 9 cosine squared theta. Okay, so all I'm doing here is putting 3 cosine theta in here and multiplying it with the other 3 cosine of theta. And now we can factor out the 9, which is 7,875, and we have the integral of cosine squared of theta, d theta. And of course, to integrate this, you have to use the half-angle identity. This is like the never-ending problem here. Cosine squared of theta is 1 plus cosine of 2 theta, all divided by 2. So we have 7,875 divided by 2. And now we just need to take the integral of 1 plus cosine of 2 theta. So this is 7875 divided by 2. The integral of 1 is theta. And the integral of cosine of 2 theta is 1 half sine of 2 theta. And we are going from negative pi over 2 to positive pi over 2. When you plug in pi over 2 into here, you will get pi. Sine of pi is 0. When you plug in negative pi over 2 into here, you will get sine of negative pi, which is also 0. So you only need to plug in pi over 2 here and here. I'll write all that down just so that you can see it. And so there it is. And like I said here, these twos cancel, and you get sine of pi and sine of pi is equal to zero. Same thing happens down here. This is equal to zero. And so what you end up with here is 7,875 over 2 times pi over 2 
minus negative pi over 2, which is plus pi over 2. And pi over 2 plus pi over 2 is pi. And so our final answer here is going to be 7,875 times pi divided by 2. And this will be measured in pounds. And this is approximately 12,370 pounds. And that concludes this video lesson.